Listen, Snail, you better look out. You're liable to be stepped on. Now stay right there. Shh. Not so loud, Penelope. You'll waken the master. Penelope, who's been teaching you to whistle? Hey! Shh! Oh! Mr. Forrester in? Shh! I'll take it. He's not to be disturbed. Well, it's very important that he gets it. Why, have you read it? I don't have to. It's from the draft board. Well, Mr. Forrester is not interested. But I'll give it to him anyway. Well, you'd better, or you'll take a little jaunt to prison. Hey, Ollie! Ollie! Hey, Ollie! Shh! If you must make a noise, make it quietly. What is it? Look, from Daniel's draft board. A sheer waste of postage. <laughs> Imagine even considering a man in Daniel Forrester's physical condition. I know, but I better give it to him anyway. What, an overtax his heart? Tear it up. Well, he goes to prison if he doesn't get it. Nonsense. I suppose Dr. Schickel's examination isn't good enough. Why, Daniel's allergic to 108 different properties, uh, including candles, cucumbers, and quinces. Well, nevertheless, I better deliver it. It's the army or prison. And if he goes to prison, he goes... Hey. Penelope, you come back with that. Good morning, Dr. Schickel. Good morning. What a beautiful morning. The birds are singing, the sun is shining, everything is alive. Dr. Schickel is here. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Dr. Schickel. Anything new? Two more allergies. Oh. What are they now? Vinegar and feathers. Oh, dear. There, there, ladies, don't be upset. Your nephew can still have his pebblum and orange juice. Oh. Good morning, boys. Come in. Mr. Daniel, may we have a leave of absence for a few years? For a few years? Yeah, and we're, we're going to prison, aren't we, Ollie? Well, what are you talking about? Well, we were going to deliver your draft notice when all of a sudden Penelope... Draft notice? My name's come up. Do you think I have a chance, Doctor? As much as a snowball in an incubator. <laughs> Thank heavens. Why, it's perfectly ridiculous. He couldn't even join the Woodcraft Boys. Eureka! Penelope, you naughty girl. This you can. It's my notice, all right. Yeah, and by air mail. Get the belt out of here. Get to me. Get to me. Get to me. He's allergic to feathers. I'm to appear for induction tomorrow. Oh, there must be some mistake. Maybe they'll take me. Huh. I will just send them a few of your x-rays. But it says I must appear personally, and I'm going. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ollie. Not you. Boy, if that guy makes it, my Aunt Minnie will join up. Here you are, sir. Daniel Forrester IV. Sit down, please. Thank you. Over here, Daniel. Gently, gently. Yes, sir. Put that match out, quick. I don't see a no smoking sign around here. He's allergic to sulfur. <laughs> Next man. Frank Dombrowski. Yes, sir. Dombrowski? Yes, sir. In here. Pardon me, Captain. I'm Dr. Hugo Schicker. Apparently, through some stupid mistake, my patient has been ordered here for examination. For 15 years, I have struggled to keep this pitiful boy alive. One look at this, and you can readily see he's a doomed man. Army regulations require more than one look, Dr. Sheko. If you'll just step in there, young man. Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor. Our examinations are conducted by Army men only. You'll excuse us. Army doctors. <laughs> Don't let him out of your sight. Snake bite? I'm testing his blood pressure. Outside, please. You're wasting your time. You won't find any blood. You certainly won't. In fact, for his birthday, we were going to give him a blood transfusion. Please! How old are you, Forrester? Twenty-three. And already a doddering old man. Take a look at his ribs. You can use them for a washboard. Your blood pressure is perfectly normal, son. I can't believe it. If you'll tap him, you'll find that his blood is pure sugar. 
Dr. Sickles says he's a walking maple tree. You hear that? His blood is so thin you can hear it flowing through his veins. Must be the whistle he swallowed ten years ago, remember? Uh-uh, that's me. Well, keep quiet. What's the verdict, Doctor? Perfect. Isn't there anything wrong with me? Nothing that a year in the army won't cure. You mean he's passed the examination? One hundred percent. Hey, Sergeant, the crook says if those draftees aren't in by seven, they don't get breakfast hot or cold. Uh, tell him to keep his pores closed. The train's late. Is that all the men? Oh, there are a couple more inside. <laughs> you guys think you're on a clam bake? Well, we didn't hear the bugle. There wasn't any bugle. Oh, so that's why we didn't hear it. Pipe down. Now, we've only got till seven. Those who want breakfast, take it on the devil. Uh, Captain, uh, Mr. Forrester is not very strong. In fact, we enlisted to see that he got proper care. Oh, I see. Now, if you'll show us to his suite, we'll serve his breakfast in his room. I'm sorry, gents. We aim to have that left wing finished by the time you got here. But I'll move the general out of his quarters tomorrow. Well, under those circumstances, we'll wait. If any of you men don't want to eat, you're coming along anyway for the exercise. I never eat in the middle of the night. I can eat this horse. But I could go for is a little more, should I? Hey, where's the cafe? Uh, why, Penelope? What are you doing here? Well, what a small world. What's the idea of that bird? Uh, why, Stan and Penelope are inseparable. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, that vulture ain't gonna camp around here. Now, tell the square before I call out the anti-aircraft. Oh, boy. Did you hear what he said? You better fly on home. Go on, Penelope. Go on. It's 1,500 miles as the crow flies. Yeah, and turn to your left at St. Louis! <laughs> Bye! All right, men, follow me on the double. Bread and butter. on the double. Thank you, Ollie. Get to the end of the line, Blimp. How do you like that guy trying to ace in there? Take it easy. I've only got two hands. Thank you forever, buddy boy. Take your time.
Sanka. You're welcome. Here we are. Well done, Stanley. Thank you, Ollie. Hey, look. Hey, listen. You, you can't eat eggs. Don't you know that you're allergic to albumin? I'm starved, and I'm going to eat. And you heard what Dr. Schickel said about pumpernickel. Yeah, and you heard what the army doctor said about Schickel. Here, Daniel. There's a seven-course dinner in one of these teeny little pills. In fact, a concentrated banquet. Does it have bacon and eggs in it? No, but it has essence of guinea fowl. Yeah, and spirits of spinach. Go on, it's good for you, go on. No, boys. I'm going to eat food, even if it kills me. It's suicide. Now, look, fellows. It was swell of you to join the army to be with me, but you have enough to do serving your Uncle Sam without serving me. <laughs> we can take care of both of you. Well, in the meantime, you better take care of your own breakfast. Look. Pardon me, but haven't you gentlemen made a slight mistake? Those are our eggs. Yeah? When did you lay them? I laid them on the tray just a minute ago, didn't I, Ollie? Yes. I... Well, did you hear anyone cackle? <laughs> Not me. Say, listen, we don't want to have any trouble, but really, we are hungry. And we haven't eaten for three days. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yeah, an army travels on its stomach, you know. What are you beefing about? You got it up there to make China and back. Now get going. Come on. Well, we don't know the way to China. How can we get it? Boy, am I hungry. Well, there's a seven-course dinner in one of these pills. And that ought to hold you till lunch. All right, men. Going over to the reception center. We've only got 20 minutes, so let's get going on the double. Ollie. What? I'm still hungry. Glutton. I said on a double. Good morning, Sergeant. Good morning, Colonel. A lightly looking bunch of men, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. I guess I spoke too soon. I, yes, sir. Is this uniform the best I could do? Oh, I don't mind. The man said I'd grow into it. Uh, say, Dad, would you mind taking a picture of us? We want to show the folks back home how we look. Why, certainly. Thank you. <laughs> Not too close. Yes, get back. Just Give it a little dignity. Ready? Shoot, Pop. Thank you. There you are. If they turn out good, we'll give you one. Good. How long you been in the army, buddy? 32 years. Hmm. You must be a sergeant. No. Surely a corporal. I'm afraid I'm not that lucky. Hmm. 32 years in the army and not even a corporal? Stan, at last I've met somebody that's dumber than you. Hmm. Attention! Carry on, sergeant. Penelope, you mustn't hang around here. What is this, a circus? Sergeant, get rid of that bird immediately. Yes. What did I ever do to deserve a couple of yaps like you? Maybe you were good to your mother. Pipe down! Yes, sir. Now, at 10 o'clock, you're all going over for an IQ test. And according to the answers you give, you'll be classified in a job. Swell, we're good at quizzes, aren't we, Ollie? Maybe they'll put me in the intelligence corps. Brother, you're with him. Right now. Where can I get some films developed? Hammond's Photoshop, over there. Thanks. Hello, 
well, Sergeant. Fine. Hey, we seem to be bumping into each other today. You get used to that. Where's the clerk? I want to have some films developed. You're in a hurry? Just drop in that box and leave your name on them. <laughs> well, my camera's jammed here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'll open it for you. No, not in the light. Gee, you'll spoil the film. Well, I'm an old... Oh, hello. Be with you in a moment. I can wait. Oh, hip, I can't find your pictures anywhere. Are you in a hurry? But maybe I can help you find them. I got eyes like an owl. Yes, and hands like an octopus. I'll get along better if you stay outside. Oh, Ginger, you got me all wrong. Remember, out of bounds. Boy, ain't she the essence of peppermint, huh? She's very nice. What do you mean, very nice? She's the best filly that ever hit the cavalry. Well, perhaps if I knew her better... I... Oh, forget it, soldier. You won't have time to. I found them, Hippo. They were in with Colonel Higgins. Jumping yacht birds. It's a good thing he didn't see them. They're snaps of me taking jumps on his horse. Oh, I'm sorry to keep you waiting, soldier. Oh, that's all right. You mind if I use your darkroom? The film's jammed in my camera. Well, go ahead. Oh, and be sure you don't scratch the negative. I hope not. They're my first pictures at camp. Maybe I'd better do it for you. Oh, I don't want to put you in any trouble. I... Well, that's what I'm here for. That don't add up. And you turn that little key. It's really jammed, all right. Now slip your hand under mine. And when I squeeze, you pull the catch. All right, I'm ready. There. Shall I unroll it? Well, why not develop it? Will it take long? Just a few minutes. You haven't been in the army long, have you? How can you tell? Oh, I don't know. You look kind of shy when you came in. Well, I was sort of surprised to see a girl here. Especially such a pretty one. Now you're beginning to sound like a trooper. Is that good? Well, not in the dark room. <laughs> what's that, a balloon? No, that's my friend Oliver. <laughs> well, what's that next to him? Well, that's the other one, Stan. They used to work for me. And now we're buddies. Has Ripley seen them? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Hippo. Was there something else? Well, don't you want to collect the pictures? Oh, are you going to pay cash this time? Yeah. How much? Dollar twenty. Excuse me. When will my pictures be finished? Tomorrow night. Well, I'll be in. Oh, wait a minute. What's your name? Well, never mind. I'll bring him. He's in my troop. Oh, you needn't bother, Sergeant. I can pick them up. Oh, no bother at all. Always glad to do a favor for a pal. See you later, Ginger. Goodbye. Well, say, Sergeant, you're a nice fella. Listen, Wolf, the next time you want pictures developed, just drop them in that box and evacuate it. But, Sergeant... That dark room's out of bounds, see? Yeah, but... You want to learn how to develop pictures? Transfer to the signal code. Yeah, but my camera was jammed. Oh, yeah? Well, the next time I'm going to jam that camera right there. That's assembly. Now get going. In the meantime, I'm going to pick out a nice, cush job for you. Well, thank you, Sergeant. Don't even give him a parachute or a pillow. Yeah, how do you like that for riding, Ginger? That's Corporal Peters, isn't it? Yeah, one of the sorriest guys in the troop. Oh, he couldn't even ride a rocking horse when he first came in here. I taught him everything he knows. Is that so? How do you like that? Now listen, men. If you think we put on this rodeo just to entertain you guys, you're wrong. After you get your training, some of you'll do a hitch right in this corral. Now the army needs riders to bust remounts. Any of you guys that have had horse experience, we can use you. I've been tangled with Bronx ever since I was knee high to a coyote, Sarge. Good. How about you, Mr. Moneybags? Well, I did some riding on our estate in Vermont. But then he was only a little twerp. <laughs> that was long before he was stricken. I see you got your alibi all set up. All right, you can cough up that silver spoon right now. Because in the army, we all start from scratch. Just a minute, Sergeant. I'll give it a try. Daniel. Daniel. Don't say that. Why, he couldn't even be trusted on a merry-go-round. It's suicide, Sergeant. Sergeant. Well, what do you say, soldier? Get a horse ready. Okay. Hey, Murph! 
Throw a saddle on that new one. 806. They say, Daniel, come back here. And Agatha and Martha will never forgive us. Listen. Don't you know that you're allergic to horses, too? Let him go. Stay with him a long time. Daniel, get out there. Oh. It's your own oh. horse. Oh. I bleed. Oh. You're dead. Oh. Is he still on the horse? Oh. Look. Sure. What a rider. Yeah, but he ain't riding regulation. Look at that hump on his back. It looks like a knapsack. Look at the way he's hanging out of that saddle. Yeah, that's what I call disgusting. Why don't you show him how, Sergeant? All right, I will. Pick him up. Yeah, you're all nerve and no talent. And I'll show you how to ride regulation. Get a lot of this technique. Let it go! So you thought it was funny when the horse threw the sergeant? Well, after all, I only smiled out loud. Yeah, you smiled so loud that he had us tow these nags five miles uphill just to exercise him. Well, it'll do them good. Well, I'm going to take a little nap right here. Well, I guess the army wouldn't miss a little nap, but we'd better not oversleep. We'll take turns, ten minutes each. That's a good idea. Oh, boy. Oh, this is... Selfish. Oh. Oh. What's that? You don't think they'd declare war without us, do you? The horses! Oh, what will the sergeant say? We'd better get back to camp. <laughs> Ninety-two percent. Take it through again, Smitty. Look, it's only a dead dud. Don't throw it away. We'll keep it as a souvenir. All right. Hey, look. Let's steal a ride back to camp. Strange-looking vehicle, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like one of those election campaign wagons. Maybe they're electing a new general. Well, if the sergeant's running, I'm not so sure if I'd vote for him or not. That goes double. Commence! Firing! What's that? Sounds like an Oregon woodpecker. No, an Oregon woodpecker makes a much softer sound. That's more like the Tennessee woodpecker that thrives on hickory. Hmm. It goes something like this. Is it that loud? 
Did I hear shooting? No, that was you imitating a woodpecker. And very good, too. Did you notice these holes before? I don't remember. We're at war! The enemy's firing on us! I can't hear you! Machine no. guns! What? Get out of you want to be killed! Your tummy. Oh. Stop shooting! We'll surrender. Oh. Hey, hey. We better report this. We'd better g g g get out of here. <laughs> Let go. Well, I'm a pigeon-toed prairie dog. Oh. Oh. Did you boys get lost? What an experience we have had. We sure have. What now? We're at war. What are you talking about? We were attacked by a nest full of machine guns. Yeah, and they weren't woodpeckers either. <laughs> you boys better watch your diet. <laughs> there you are, Stan. I told you he wouldn't believe us. Look. Where'd you get that? On the battlefield. We're gonna make a bud vase for Aunt Agatha and Martha. How? Well, like this. It's all right, it's only a dud dead, a dead dud. See, it's all tarnished. Won't that make a pretty souvenir after it's polished? Look, it's full of powder. Huh. Hey, that's Private Mealy's tobacco. So it is. I'll take it outside and sift it. Yeah, we'll sift it. Oh, there you are. Those horses came in alone and sweating. Where you been? Didn't they tell you what happened? Didn't who tell me? The horses. No, I mean the... Funny the... man, huh? Now, we've got news for you, Sarge, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Spill it. We're at war. Look. They shot him off. Now, give me that malarkey. Why, this tent looks like a flop house. Do you guys have pillow fights? No, sir, we're, we're too tired for that. We're having a surprise inspection by General Taylor. Who's that? Never mind. Now, police up this tent and get into your dress ODs right away. Yes, sir. That goes for you, too, Mr. Pot of Gold. Will I have time to wash up? All right, but make it snappy. Come on, get with it! On the double? Yeah! Make up this cart regulation. Yes, sir. And this one, too. <laughs> yes, sir. Sergeant, I... None of your lip, rookie. And fold that blanket like I showed you. But please, sir, that's not... I suppose you're gonna tell me how to make a bed. No, but, uh... And there's no butts in the army. What are you two yaps doing? Playing games? No, sir, we were only trying to tell you... You ain't telling me anything. Now stop your arguing. If you guys spoil Troop D's record, I'll run you through a meat grinder. Now rattle your hocks. But you won't listen. Now get this. I'm the big noise around here, and you guys do the listening, see? Give me a match. And you yaps be ready. The sergeant is certainly a headstrong man. You're right, he doesn't appreciate real friends. What was that? I heard something, too. Uh, uh, possibly a woodpecker. Look, they've assigned us a porter. You may start over here, my good man. And you may have Thursdays off. Twice a week. Listen, you jugheads. Why, it sounds like Sergeant Hippo. It sure does. It is Sergeant Hippo. In camouflage. Listen, I don't care if it takes me the rest of my life. I'm gonna find out which of you two guys... Have any of you men seen Sergeant Hippo? Yes, sir. 
What are you trying to do? Put on a minstrel show? You know we've got an inspection in ten minutes. Y yes, sir. You're a fine example for the new men. Now get out of here and try to make yourself look something like a trooper. Yes, Lieutenant. Carry on. Did you get a load of the big noise? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh Black Joe! Yeah. <laughs> I never saw the I didn't either! <laughs> Hi, buddies. Person House! Of all the insolent, stubborn, we're shipping her home tomorrow by Air Express. She'll never stand the altitude. Well, it's up to you to get rid of that bird before the army gets rid of us. What am I going to do with it? Ditch us somewhere quick. Here comes the colonel, the general, and the whole outfit. Hurry up. Quick. Hold this gun. All right. Hurry up now. Get rid of it. What did you want to put that in my pants for? Oh. 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 What was that? A uh, frog in the throat. <coughs> Sir. <laughs> Are you men with Troop D? Yes, sir. We're neighbors of Troop C. They're the swellest bunch. Are you nervous, son? A little, sir. He's a sensitive. <laughs> now, just relax, soldier. I'll try to... As you were! What is all this? We like him, sir. He's very nice to us. <laughs> Turn that over! <laughs> oh. Oh, no, sir. They don't come this far south. Get that wall-eyed peacock out of there. Yes, sir. Take Highway 66, and when you get... You call this a military formation? I want a full report of this sent to headquarters at once. Dismissed! Oh. Hey, 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 hey. I was never so humiliated in all my life. <laughs> Nothing to laugh at. I thought you were pretty good. <laughs> Well, yes. if I had known the Army was going to be this much fun, I would have enlisted long ago. It's all in the point of view. Yes, sir. Well, I'm going over to get those pictures we took. So long, boys. Goodbye. So long. Hope they turn out good. Stanley, I'm worried about that boy. What's the matter? He's been acting very strange the last day or two. Strange? He's too happy. Huh. You know how he was before he went into Watson's malady. I'll never forget it. That was terrible.
say, Ollie. What? What time is it? It's nearly half past. Thank you, Ollie. Good evening. Hey, what's this? Did I win the daily double? Oh, that was a dollar bill you gave me. I thought it was a five. <laughs> Even so, you counted out ten. You'll never get rich. I know this song. Anyway, what's money? Yeah, scraps of paper? I hate it. Uh, me too. Come on, how about another nickel? Oh, dear, I must be slipping. <laughs> Good night, Ginger. Night. Are my pictures finished? Well, you didn't give me your name when you left them. Oh, they're easily identified. I'm in the pictures. Oh, yes. Now, let's see. I remember there was one with you standing with an observation balloon and a, and a fire hydrant. <laughs> That's <laughs> the one with Oliver and Stan. They're still in the dark room. You want to see them? It, it's not too much trouble. Come on in. Here they are. That's my first day at camp. Just before they issued you your muscles. <laughs> That's right. Apparently, the Army agrees with you. Oh, I like it more all the time. Seems to me I've heard that record played around here before. <laughs> Maybe you have, but I find army life very fascinating. Oh, I thought you meant... Well, that's exactly what I meant. In spite of the hard work, I like it. Oh, look, a double exposure. Oh, we've spoiled that one. I'm on it twice. Well, I don't think that spoils it. What? Well, that's me on a bucking horse. <laughs> Boy, I sure had my hands full. Yes, isn't that a good action shot? Yeah. Why, hello, Hippo. Hi, Ginge. How's about zooming over to San Felipe tonight, eh? Zooming? Yeah, I just borrowed a dispatch motorcycle and took off the sidecar. You're riding up on the gas tank. On a motorcycle? Yeah, jump into a pair of slacks and let's get to whizzing, huh? Oh, <laughs> not me, pal. All right, we'll take the bus then. Not tonight, thanks, Hippo, my boy. Listen, you can't do that to me, Ginger. Billy over at the tailor shop wanted me to take her. I said, no, you and me had a date. Well, now, isn't that dandy? Maybe I have a date. Come on, let's get going, will you? Sorry, Hippo. Listen, Sugarfoot, little old Hips has had a tough day, and he sure could use some giggling. <laughs> Here's one of Sergeant Hippo that'll make you laugh. Oh, hello, Sergeant. Did you see this? <laughs> I ain't interested. And listen, Mr. Gottbrox, what did I tell you about that dog room? Well, I looked up regulations. And I it... say it's out of bounds. This happens to be a private concession, Sergeant. Uh, so I notice. Oh, no, let's not have a row here. There won't be any row if Mr. Fancy Pants here stays out of that dog room. Oh, well, if you'll excuse me. With muscles. Wait a minute. Aren't you going to keep your date with me? What? You mean you've got a date with him? Yes, I'm sorry, Hippo. You see, I made it just a moment before you came in. How do you like that? Well, he ain't even a first-class private. Well, I think he is, even if he doesn't wear it on his sleeve. Ginger, you murder me. Now, look, if you hurry, you might catch Millie. I might at that. Yeah. Hey, and that dark room is still out of bounds. Now, that's a character. Yeah, he is different. I hope I wasn't being too presumptuous in telling him I had a date with you. Oh, well, that's all right. I don't mind. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, wait a minute, soldier. You're a peculiar duck. Are you married or engaged or something? No, nothing like that. Why? Were you just born frightened? I don't remember. They never let me get around much before now. Say, how would you like to keep that date with me? That'd be swell. Well, fine. I'll get my hat. Well, what do you know? Any sign of Daniel? The men haven't seen him. Maybe he deserted. Us? No, the army. Now, what'll he do without you and me? I shouldn't wonder. Well, it's getting late, and if he's not back by next Thursday, I'm going to notify the War Department. That's a good idea.
Good evening, boys. Daniel, where have you been? We've been worrying about you. Do you know it's after 8 o'clock? Oh, I've been taking a lesson in photography. Well, you seem unusually happy about it. Oh, I am. It's a wonderful hobby. What's come over you? You never sung before. Well, I never had anything to sing about before. Is merely developing pictures such a joy? More than I ever realized. That kid's got me worried. He certainly has changed. Wouldn't know it was the same boy. Uh, Stanley, what time is it? It's about half past... Something went wrong. bounds, eh? Out of bounds, eh? Not for me, it isn't. Not anymore. Can't see. Ginger. Ginger. All right, it's the dark room. And it isn't out of bounds for me, is it? Sonambulism. Some talk. I knew that Daniel would never withstand the rigors of army life. Do you think we ought to phone Dr. Schickel? I love you, Ginger. Hear that? He loves Ginger. Never could eat at home. You love Agatha and Martha. Now I know he's dreaming. Do you think Ginger could be a woman? Could be a cookie. It's a dark room. A beautiful dark room. Just let me look at you, Ginger. It is a cookie. He's in love. His heart will never stand it. Daniel! Daniel! You're too late, Sergeant. It's me, Oliver. Oh, what's the matter? Who's Ginger? She's the most wonderful girl in the world. Here, take one of these. It'll make you forget her. I don't want to forget her. Remember what Dr. Schickel said about your heart. A romance would be fatal. Oh, please, boys. Go back to sleep and let me dream. All right, but don't overdo it. You may wait for us, my good man. I hope it won't take long. You know, after four o'clock, we pay overtime for these outfits. <laughs> She'll be putty in my hands. Virginia Hammond, Virginia Hammond. Miss Hammond lives upstairs in 204. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's right. Second floor. Oh, thank you very much. Hmm. You remember what you're supposed to be? Sure, I'm a typhoon. Not typhoon, tycoon. A Wall Street tycoon. With a stock on the seat exchange. That's right. Just forget it. I'll do the talking. Stuck on the seating. How do you do? <laughs> uh, Miss Hammond? Yes? Uh, my name is Megatroy, and this is my business colleague, Mr. Sylvester Sneer. <laughs> we are here on a very important mission. Well, uh, won't you come in? Thank you. Come, Silly. I call him Silly for short. <laughs> Sit down, gentlemen. You? <clears throat> nice, cozy little uh, nest you have here, Miss Hammond. Well, 
it's comfortable. If you don't think so, you ought to sleep in an army tent. <laughs> we slept in one last night. Quite an experience. Uh, we're inspecting Fort Merritt for the government. Dollar a year, man. <laughs> You'd be surprised how little we can save out of that. <clears throat> now, look, what's this all about, gentlemen? Well, it's all about the... It's all about Daniel Forrester. Uh, you know him, of course. Why, I certainly do. I think he's a wonderful boy. Ah, uh, but as poor as a church mouse. And sick as a dog. Uh, I don't understand. Neither does he. Poor boy. He thinks he's wealthy, but Miss Hammond, Daniel Forrester is bankrupt. Absolutely broke. Our firm has been financing him for years. But only because of his hopeless physical condition has his hopeless financial condition been kept a secret. Mr. Snare and myself have been carrying quite a burden. Believe me, my dear, it has cost us a king's ransom. Thank you. But what has all this to do with me? Well, to take the bull with the horns, Daniel could never support you on his meager salary. And the takeout for laundry, too. We know. Daniel. My Daniel. Broke. Oh. Flatter than a sand death. Did he send you here? No. Daniel's too proud. Oh, the poor deluded darling. I knew you would understand. Understand? Understand what? Why, that you'd give him up. Give up, Daniel, the only thing I have left. Are you mad? No, just practical. Oh, what have I done to deserve this? All my life I've hoped and prayed for a Prince Charming that would ride up on his white steed and sweep me into his heart. And now to have it all vanish like a shattered dream. But you have your youth, your charm, your... Your beautiful. Give up this human derelict. No! Without Daniel, I... I'm nothing, a mere, a mere empty shell. All right, Miss Hammond. What is your price to release your prisoner? Now, don't forget, we're only dollar a year, men. You offer me money? Come, come, my dear. Daniel is not such a bargain. Oh, please, please, I, I'm confused. Miss Hammond, I am awaiting your answer. No. No, Mr. Uh, uh, um, uh, Purgatory. Uh, Megatroy. Megatroy. <clears throat> All of your wealth isn't enough for me to make this sacrifice. See, I told you it was short. Started at a doll and a half. Get out! Get out! But wait! Wait! You're Get taking out. the life of an innocent man! Get out! You, you charlatan, you! What's a charlatan? Get out! Boy, she's a tough customer. What are you moping about? She's so sweet! <laughs> Come on. She's a woman to be reckoned with, all right. Personally, I, I thought she was very nice. Now, what do you know about women of the world? Hello, boy. Oh, hello, Daniel. Hello, Daniel. <laughs> Say, we got a surprise for you. Really? We're treating you to a movie tonight. Yeah, and you can stay up till 10 o'clock. 12.30. It's a double feature. Yeah, and they're showing a Mickey Duck. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, boys, but I have a date with Ginger. Daniel, you shouldn't go out with girls. It's dangerous. It might affect your heart. Oh, it has already. For the first time, it's starting to beat. Our last hope is in Sergeant Hippo. We'll ask his advice. He'll charge us for it. It's worth it. Come on. Where are you going? I'm going over and see Sa... Come on, get up. Well, oh! Come in! Stanley. Well, 
I thought you guys went out of town for the weekend. Oh, no, sir. We like it here. Uh, Sergeant, we need some advice. Well, that's what I'm here for. What's on your mind? Daniel's going to kill himself. Oh, is that all? He's infatuated with a woman. Oh, yeah? Who is it? Vanilla or lemon or something. Ginger. So, oh, Ginger. Ginger haven't? Then you know her. You see, Stan, she's notorious. It'll mean the end of Daniel. I'll say it will. I knew you would understand. You better hurry before it's too late. Yeah, he's meeting her tonight, and maybe a nice heart-to-heart -heart talk will convince him of his folly. That's a cinch. You know what, Ollie? What? Deep down in his heart, that sergeant's a good kid. A prince among men. Jim. Come on, you yaps! Hello, Sergeant. Where do you think you're going? Into town. It's Saturday, you know. I suppose you think you're going to see Ginger tonight, huh? How'd you guess it? If you know what's good for you, you'll stay away from me. Sorry. She's expecting me tonight, and I wouldn't disappoint the lady. If you're smart, you will. No! <laughs> Oh! Hello, Sergeant. Long time no see. Your friend is a pretty brave guy. All right, Sergeant. Have you anything more to say? Just that I warned you. I'll take the chance. Listen, time and Jim, that's insubordination. I can be plenty tough on you. But I'm gonna be fair. All right, your furlough is over, wise guy. It's the guardhouse for you. Come on. Fellows. Come on! Haven't you anything to say? I ain't interested. Come on, get going. You know what, Ollie? What? I feel like a mouse. We had to do it. It hurt me more than it did him. Poor Daniel! Well, there goes our trip, Chuck. Here's a wig at the saddle, but hard. I wonder what problems they're gonna give us. You got me. The military problem in this maneuver will include our entire fighting force. The division will be divided into two opposing combat units, the Blue Force and the White Force. Now, the Blue Force, with a battalion of engineers attached, will attack the Whites from an area somewhere along the 70 miles of river designated here. However, before the attack, they'll be required to construct a pontoon bridge over which the entire brigade must pass before invading the area occupied by the Whites. The problem of the White Force is to detect the secret location of this bridgehead and destroy it before it's completed. Hey, Daniel! Here. Hello, Daniel. We've come to say goodbye. Well, goodbye. Uh, Daniel, we're sorry for what happened, but we had to save you from yourself. Yeah, she was a real vampire. Oh, forget it. We're going to play soldier. Uh, uh, they put us in the white army. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, we're fighting the blue bloods. And we bet Sergeant Hippo $40 to his 20 that we win. He's given us two to one. Yeah. Uh, goodbye, Daniel. Remember your diet now. See you after the war. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Daniel. B-2 patrol? Yes, sir. Follow this train and don't slow down till you get to the river. Yes, sir. section of the river being scouted, Captain? Yes, sir. It's just possible that Colonel Weyburn's Blue Army might pick that spot to build a bridge. I have a scouting party reconnoitering in that sector now, sir. Good.
patrol reported from Sector 7. No contact is yet with enemy. Instruct them to proceed to Gila Point. Proceed to Gila Point. Yes, sir. Proceed to Gila Point. Wait for a scouting party? Well, what are you waiting for? Let them have it. How charming. Now, if we could only find the Blue Army Bridge, we'd get a medal just as sure as... Hey, you! You White Army men? Yes, sir. Patrol B-2. And who are you, may we ask? This is the Blue Army, and you're our prisoners. Pleased to meet. Oh. All right, come on. Pile out of there. What will we do? Lock the car so they can't use it. I'll put it in my mouth in case they search me. That's a good idea, Oh! Come on, you fellas. File out of there. White Army prisoner, sir. Patrol B-2. Confirmed. Report this to headquarters. Put these men to work on the bridge. Yes, sir. Well, that isn't exactly cricket, sir. All right, on the double, you guys. Come on. Goodbye. Reporting capture of your B-2 scouting party, sir. The stupid, blundering idiots. How's it feel to be a yard bird in a gilded cage, soldier? Thought you might be interested to know those two buddies of yours were just captured by the Blue Army. Just got it through the grapevine. So what? So the Blues cross the bridge, polish off the whites, and I'm 40 bucks ahead. Just like that, huh? Yeah. Did you say that Stan and Oliver have been captured? You heard me. And if I know my maneuvers, they're helping those blue engineers to build that bridge right now. They're what I call a couple of pigeons. But you haven't won yet. No? But I still got 50 that says the Blue Army win. I'll take that bet, Sergeant. You're on, chump. Hey! Hey, where's that prisoner? Where's he? He's gone! You take it through there. Come on, you follow me. Penelope, here's your chance to make good. Now go to Stan. Stan, do you hear? He's got a nice, fat worm point.
Don't work any harder than you have to for these blues. I won't. How's this? Perfect. The location of the Blue Army Bridge is still undetermined, sir. If we don't find Wayburn's Cusset Bridge, the Blue Army will cross it, not flank us. But we haven't heard from B-5 yet, sir. Uh. Sorry to interrupt, sir, but I'm sure I can find the bridge. With what, a Ouija board? No, sir, by following that bird. That bird? You remember it, sir. It's my buddy's pet. They've been captured, and she's heading for the bridge right now. Report back to your troop. Hold on there, soldier. It's a long chance. But we can't win standing around waiting to be outmaneuvered. Order the entire unit to follow this man. Yes, sir. Attention all troops. in this sector heading this way, sir. What progress have we made on the bridge? Almost complete, sir. Deploy for counterattack. Deploy for counterattack. Command post four. Command post four. Deploy for counterattack. We can go without that black pelican popping up. Penelope, did you know that your Uncle Ollie and, and me have been captured? This is no place for pets. Get back to work. Holy Hannah, it's the White Force. Yeah, that was the bridge, men. The White Force wins. We won the war. Yeah, and our 40 bucks. <laughs> You're ready. Thank you. 